Hey there, my name is Drew Brashler, and I want to help you feel more confident in your production gear, no matter where you're starting from. Today, we're going to be talking about compression and vocals. If you missed my video on EQing vocals from last week, make sure to go check that out, as I have a link right there. But today, we're going to be talking about compression. So I have the same audio pulled up from last week that I was talking about at the end of the video. So let's go ahead and give that a quick listen. All right, let's go ahead and turn the band off and let's give this one more listen. I can see your light chasing after me. Oh, you are good to me. I can hear your voice calling out for me. You are good to me. So the first thing that I hear when I listen to this is the words I and light. Both of those are very pointed and they come straight through the mix. The rest of it is pretty good on the dynamics wise, but those two words at really high volumes out of a PA would just make your eyeballs hurt. So what can we do about this? Well, there is compression that we can do. So compression is going to allow us to take those really loud transients like the eye and the light or those really loud words and just tame them down. So the idea behind compression is any transients or very loud peaks, we can actually take that and lower that down to the remaining level of the rest of the vocal. So if you imagine this vocal, there's I and then light and those two words are pretty high and then the rest of the words are pretty even on the volume wise. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the I and the light and we're going to reduce the dynamics of those down and then we can bring up the rest of the vocal up. And you'll notice that I, my two vocals here are sitting at like positive 10 and about positive eight. And so by doing compression, we're going to be able to take the whole vocal up in gain with all of the lower words that we hear. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn down the vocal two and we're just gonna focus on the first vocalist. So our vocal one here that I have, I have it selected. And the first thing that you're going to want to do is press view on the dynamic section. And that's actually going to pull that over on the right hand side. And the next thing that we want to do is we want to enable it, which we can either do by pressing this button right here, or we can press it by pressing active up here. Now there's a couple different compression settings that we have on this screen, and I'm going to explain all of them right now. So the first thing that we wanna talk about is threshold. And threshold is going to be the point where our compressor will start activating and affecting the channel. And we can go ahead and change this ratio up to 100 to one, and I'll talk about the ratio here in a second, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn this, this threshold down. And we can either use this, ratio, this threshold knob right here, or we can actually use the threshold knob that's over here on the left side of the console. Now, we will notice this yellow ball here, and if I go ahead and play some audio into this, we will see that bumping around. And so that yellow ball is where the volume is at that moment. So our ratio is going to be how much compression is going to actually happen when the audio hits that threshold. So with a ratio of 1.1 to 1, that means for Every 1.1 dB above the threshold, it will only go up by one. And so if we change this to a threshold of two to one, every two dB above that threshold point, the output out of this compressor will increase by one dB. If we change this to three dB, or a three to one ratio, that will be that my vocalist will have to sing 3 dB louder than my threshold point for the vocal on the output to go up by one. And so if we change this to 10 to one, that means that my vocalist will have to sing 10 dB louder than that threshold point for it to go up by one dB.
So you can see that if we went up to 100 to 1 or a 20 to 1 or 100 to 1, that that is what we call a limiter because my vocalist would have to sing 100 dB louder than whatever I have my threshold point for it to go up 1 dB, which is theoretically impossible <laughs> because there wouldn't be enough headroom on this microphone for that to actually happen. So that's what our ratio is, is it allows us to vary the amount of compression that actually happens on this channel in combination with the threshold. The next thing that I want to talk about is actually on the second screen in here. So we're going to press our layer button down to be on layer two, and that is the knee. The knee allows us to round out this little point here. So with a knee of zero, that means that we have a very defined compression threshold point. If we take this knee up to a five, you'll notice that this rounds out very significantly. And what that means is that my threshold point's about right there on the screen, but what will happen is it will start gradually applying compression before it hits the threshold point. So depending on the vocalist, I will set this anywhere from a zero to a three on the knee, depending on how much compression we want to have happen on the softer notes. So that will just give a smoother transition. And if you're brand new starting out to compression, I would suggest having your knee being a little bit higher, like a knee of three, and that way your compression threshold point, if you're not perfect to being able to set that, will be a little bit more gradual throughout that audio section that you're doing. So we're going to go back up to our layer one section here, and we're going to talk about our attack, hold, and release times. So the attack time on this compressor is the amount of time that it takes this compressor to apply attenuation or lowering that volume once that audio meets that threshold point. So if we have an attack time of, say, 100 milliseconds, right there, once your audio reaches that threshold point, which we have set right here, then it will take 100 milliseconds before it starts applying muting, or the amount of ratio that we have here, to that channel. So if we have this attack time, at, say, down at 30 milliseconds, it's going to take 30 milliseconds of time before it applies full attenuation on this channel. The next thing that we have is our hold time. Now, once that audio goes back down below that threshold point, our hold time is going to say to this compressor, we are going to continue attenuating this channel for this set amount of time before we follow into the next thing, which is the release. So this hold time, I would suggest, if you're brand new to, to compression, to setting this as fast as it will go for the hold time, so 0 0.02. But if we have this set at, say, 20 milliseconds, once the audio reaches that threshold point and goes below, the compressor will stay compressed for 20 milliseconds before it hits the release time to finish out your compression cycle here. So I would definitely suggest having this at 0 0.02 if you're just getting into compression. That way you can tr start training your mind to hear these things happen. Now the release time is the amount of time that it takes to release that attenuation on the outside of the hold time. So audio reaches that threshold point on the downswing of that channel, and then we get that hold time, and then we get the release time. So that release time is how long it takes for that audio to be not attenuated anymore by this compressor. So if you're just diving into compression, the one thing that I suggest is um, doing a virtual sound check. So make sure to record your whole band and play it back into the board, otherwise, your vocalists are really not gonna like you. Anyway, so what we're gonna do is I would suggest setting your ratio to 100 to one and turning it down significantly. And so what this will actually allow us to do is this will allow us to hear the attack time and the release time pretty nicely. So let's go ahead and play some audio through this and start training your ear on how to hear this compression. I can see your light chasing Okay, so obviously I am doing a lot of compression here on this vocalist, but what I'm wanting you to listen to is the attack. So I'm going to vary this down to a very fast attack. Okay. 
Okay, so next I'm going to set this to about 30 milliseconds, and we're gonna see the difference in sound this makes. Now, when you're hearing compression and you're thinking of the attack, you're wanting to hear the first note that comes through when he says, I and light. So focus your ears on I and light on this passage here. I can see your light chasing out to me. Can see your light chasing out to me. Now I'm going to go ahead and put this attack down to one millisecond, and we'll give that another listen. I can see your light chasing out to me. I can see your light chasing out to me. I can see your light chasing out to me. I can see your light chasing out to me I can see your light chasing out to me I can see your light chasing out to me I can see your light chasing out to me I can see your light chasing out to me I can see your light chasing out to me okay so what I want you to hear is that if we don't have a fast enough attack, that attenuation will happen mid-word. And so what's happening here, when we have an attack of 97, this is way too long or slow an attack, is that that I can see your light, those big transients that are coming through are going straight through the compressor and then it's starting to attenuate after those big transients have come through. But if we're down in the one millisecond, then it's going to be too fast. So <laughs> the, the vocal almost becomes inintelligible at that point. So let's go ahead and start setting this attack time to a reasonable amount. I can see your light. 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 I can see your light chasing out to me. Okay, so that's probably the attack time that I would be choosing for this vocal. So when this vocal is saying, I can see the light, it's not super aggressive like it was before. The next thing that I'm gonna do, even with my ratio down here at 101 and my threshold really, really low, is I'm going to set my release time. Now again, the release time is how quickly does this compressor relax off of this channel once that audio has gone down below that threshold point. So let's go ahead and give this a listen. I can see your light chasing out to me. I can see your light chasing out to me. So if we set too long of a release time, it's not going to give any benefit to us on the volume. And you can see how long it takes. Now, again, if we go all the way to five milliseconds. I can see your light chasing out. I can see your light chasing I can see your light. Okay, so I, we know how that vocal actually sounds before the compression. So let's go ahead and give it a listen. I can see your light chasing. I can see your light. 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 Okay, so this is what we call pumping and breathing. So if you ever read about compression and you hear about pumping and breathing, that's that sound that's happening. I is compressing super fast and then releasing very quickly, and it sounds almost weird. And so that's what's happening here. I can see your I can see your light I can see your light I can see your light the the second portion of I is louder than the first portion of I and so this is too fast of a release time and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start dialing this release time a little bit longer until we get a reasonable amount of signal through and keeping the word still intact 
can see your I can see your light. I can see your light. I can see your light chasing. I can see your light chasing. I can see your light chasing out to me. That's probably about where I would go. So I have an attack time of 24 milliseconds on this vocalist and a release time of 68. And so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my ratio back because currently I have it at 100 to 1, meaning that my vocalist will have to sing 100 dB louder to go up 1 dB above this threshold point, which is just ridiculous. So I'm going to go ahead and set this to 10 to 1. Now, when I'm doing vocals and I'm mixing, most of these are going to be a little bit more rock and roll sounding. So in my church, we're gonna be doing a little bit more contemporary music, or in my venues that I'm mixing in, it's gonna be a little bit more rock and roll. If you are mixing a jazz thing, you might not want to do a 10 to one ratio on compression, as that's not what that music calls for. So when I'm mixing, I'm gonna be mixing more contemporary type styles. And so in that case, I'm wanting my vocal to be very far forward and really contained in a nice package. And to do that, I'm going to actually be setting my, uh, my ratio on my compression to about a 10 to one. Now the Behringer X32 only really allows us to have two compressors if we want to use one of the effects section and insert an effects rack compressor on top of the compressor that we already have of the channel. Some other consoles actually have two compressors or multiple compressors that we can use in that single channel. Now, the benefit of having multiple compressors is that the compression can become a little bit more transparent. So you can have one compressor with a little bit faster attack time and a little bit faster of a release time. And then your second compressor, you can have a little bit longer of an attack time and a longer release time. And those two compressors can work hand in hand to make that compression sound a little bit more transparent. So in this case, I'm just gonna be showing you one compressor in another video I'm going to be showing you how we can stack another compressor, say the Ultimo compressor, in combination with this channel compressor to give us a pretty good solid compression on this vocal. But today, we're just going to be using our one compressor. So the thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to a 10 to 1 ratio, and I'm going to bring our threshold up. And let's go ahead and li give this a listen. And so this is going to be without any compression because our threshold is so high. I can see your light chasing out. I can see your light chasing out to me. I can see your light chasing out to me. I can see your light chasing out to me. I can see your light chasing out to me. I can see your light chasing out to me. I can see your light chasing out to me. Okay, that is where I would be placing my compressor at. We can get that eye down contained into the rest of the vocal, and then the rest of the vocal just all of a sudden sits really nicely together. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this compressor off, and we'll give it a listen. I can see your light chasing out to me. I can see your light chasing and then here's with out compression. to me. I can see your light chasing out to me. Okay, so the next thing that we want to talk about is the makeup gain, and that is labeled gain here, and I actually had it set at three and a half dB. When we are applying compression, it is attenuating that channel or bringing the volume down. So if you bring all the volume of those peaks down, all of a sudden you've turned your vocal down to a point where you need to boost the fader up even higher. So what we have is makeup gain. And so this little red bar here is showing us how much gain attenuation we are doing on this channel. And so our makeup gain is going to allow us to match whatever amount of attenuation we're doing to bring that back up or a makeup gain. So usually what you'll want to do when you're setting this gain is you'll want to A, use your ears and B, use this meter. 
So let's go ahead and set this makeup again. So I'm gonna go ahead and press play on this. So we can see that we're getting and about the negative nine on the peaks, but pretty consistently sitting about the four dB mark. Okay, so what we know we've done correctly, if we've set our makeup gain correctly, is that when we turn off our compressor, the volume should stay the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off mid-song here, and the overall volume should stay the same. Obviously, the eye and the light are gonna be loud, but. I can see your light chasing out to me. I can see your light chasing out to me. I can see your light chasing out to me. I can see your light chasing out to me. Actually, needs to come up just a little bit more. I can see your light chasing out to me. I can see your light chasing out to me. All right. Let's go ahead and listen to this compression turned off back with the band up, and then we'll turn on the compressor and see how much better this is. So here we have our vocal one, Dynamics is turned off. Okay, so I am noticing that I can actually bring this threshold down a little bit more and my uh, gain will have to turn up just a little bit more um, to, because I'm noticing that the eye and the light is still kind of coming through a little bit too much here. So let's go ahead and give this another listen. Here's without compression. Okay, let's go ahead and add compression on our vocal two here. And I'm just going to copy over a few settings here. 10 to one, my attack time's probably gonna be around in that and release is gonna be around in there. And let's just go ahead and give this a quick listen. So knee is gonna be at three and we'll turn our threshold down and give her a listen. So muting the band, muting vocal one, give this a listen. Okay, let's give a listen before we actually apply compression here. I can see your light chasing Ooh. after me. So I can see and then light is significantly louder. Let's give that another listen. I can see your light chasing after me. All right, so let's go ahead and apply this compressor and get this threshold set. I can see your light chasing after me. 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 There we go. That's a good sec sound. I can see your light chasing. I can see your light chasing after me. Okay, so makeup gain will have to come up a little bit. I can see your light chasing after me. I can see your light chasing me. Boost me a little bit, but that's okay. Okay, I so let's go ahead and bring our two vocalists up here. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off compression on both of these real fast. So here, turning off compression on vocal two, turning off compression on vocal one. And let's give a listen to the two of them together without the band. I can see your light chasing after me. Again? 
Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and turn on the compression. Compression. There we go. And play. I can see your light chasing after me. I can see your light chasing after me. Oh, you are good to me. All right, let's go ahead and listen to it with the band here. Okay, let's go ahead and turn off the dynamics and listen to it with the band again. Okay, so I and light are loud, and the oh that he does in the in the middle of the two sections here is a little bit quieter. So let's go ahead and give it a listen with compression, as that is going to bring that back up here. I can see your light Okay, so that is a really fast and dirty way of doing vocal compression on your vocals. Now, there's a whole lot more that I can dive into on this compressor, but I'm not going to today because this is just a basic theory of compression on vocals. But hopefully this will help you get a little bit better with your compression on your vocals and give you another tool that you can use to really sculpt your mix for your next show or weekend. Now, one thing to mention about compression, when you are compressing something live and you are bringing your makeup gain up, you are going to reduce your gain before feedback. And gain before feedback means that how loud you can turn that up before it starts feeding back. So with no compression, you can turn up something. And then if you then turn that back down and apply gain inside of your compressor and compress those loud notes, and the moment that we add makeup gain here, we are adding gain to that channel. So and then if you go turn it back up, you may get into feedback. So you just have to be very careful with the amount of makeup gain you are applying to a channel as you can reduce that gain before feedback and get into feedback territory on your channel. So just be careful. But compression is really going to be useful for getting that vocal very forward in your mix, very centered up, and just even and dynamically sound in your mix. So Thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel down below as I am always releasing new content and then you will be notified when I do. Also, please leave a question down below. I'm always browsing the comments, looking for other questions that you might have on videos that I can do in the future that would be helpful for you. But again, my name is Drew Bachelor, and thank you so much for watching.